on the show, we're talking about absolute carnage. All the way from the worst to the first. <laughs> Kylo. Whee! Comic Book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to do my continuing coverage on Absolute Carnage. That's right, fans. I'm here to help you make decisions on which Absolute Carnage books to buy. And this week, there was four of them. And today, we're going to do a countdown ranking these books from my least favorite one to my number one, right? And hopefully, again, this will help you make decisions on which of these books to buy so so we're gonna kick off this countdown with number four and number four was absolute carnage miles morales issue one now this one does continue it does move forward uh so there is a to be continued at the end of this book but the reason why this gets number four is that there seems to be a editorial issue when it comes to miles morales absolute carnage and the main story okay it doesn't match up it's not consistent and uh i was very surprised by this and it's kind of like you don't really need to read this book to understand what's going on it doesn't <laughs> it's like Hey, if you didn't read Absolute Carnage issue two, you can read this and find out what happened to Miles Mor Morales in this. But there was a lot of inconsistencies. When you have, uh, for instance, Miles is teaming up with Gargan in this issue um, to try to stop all of Carnage's little cronies here, we wind up seeing that the story does just not match up, okay? Um Carnage's little cronies are wearing Ravencroft suits. Well, in the Absolute Carnage book, they're not wearing the suits, like orange jumpsuits, okay? In this issue, you wind up seeing that um, Eddie Brock doesn't throw Matt Gargan into the fight. He's kind of leaving, right, and throws Miles Morales into the fight. And the way that Miles Morales gets possessed by Carnage in this book is not the same way it happens in the Absolute Carnage book. So it's like, what does this book really offer to its readers besides an inconsistent story with Absolute Carnage? It's like a different way of looking at how Miles Morales got possessed. But who cares? Because that happened in the main story. Why would you pick this up? This offers really nothing different uh, from the Absolute Carnage book. It really doesn't. It's only maybe minutes before Mac Gargan and Maz Morales um, are teaming up in the Absolute Carnage book. It just doesn't make sense. The inconsistencies in this was ridiculous. This book should have not been made or it should have been told in a different timeline. It just does not make sense. So if you are on the fence or still have not picked up your books here, do not pick up Absolute Carnage Miles Morales. There's nothing here that you need to read that doesn't take place in Absolute Carnage issue two. And this does continue going forward, so maybe that's why. But nevertheless, you would think their story matches up with the Absolute Carnage book. It's very, very unsettling. Okay, moving on to number three now. Number three is Lethal Protectors, issue one, okay? This book is, I think, a one-shot. I don't think it continues or does it continue. Let me just look real quick. You know, it does continue as well. So if you read the Web of Carnage one-shot, it kind of takes place after that because you have Misty Knight and you have John Jonah Jameson in here, and he's the wolf and he's the one that's serving uh, Carnage in this series, okay? So this book does take place. You see a few pages where this takes place right before um, Spider-Man and Venom invade Ravencroft, okay? And you see Spidey, he's actually talking to J. Jonah Jameson in this issue and saying, hey, is everything okay? Can we go in and we can go after? He's like, yeah, sure, Spidey, I'll help you. So you get to see that it's all a setup because you get all these you know, dead people lying around and what out, and he kind of leads them right into the spire of Carnage's peoples and everything else. And from there on out, you kind of know what happens in Absolute Carnage issue one. So that ties in really well. 
And then in this particular issue, you wind up seeing Carnage, who is trying to make a sacrifice uh, uh, for, I think it was Scream, to bring back Dima Goblin. So she winds up being resurrected. And uh, it's a mixture between Scream and Dima, not Scream, um, Screech and Dima Goblin. And she's resurrected. Okay, and so they're together, and Misty Knight was captured and brought in just so Carnage could actually eat her. That's the only reason why she's really in this book is just to be eaten, okay? Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting. Nevertheless, it does make for a pretty cool story to see what happened to Misty Knight after that web of Carnage book, how she got thrown in jail, and how John Jameson actually... Um, betrayed her and whatnot and how misty knight is trying to escape and trying to you know survive in this world and by the time we get to the end of this book she's being trapped by uh all of carnage's little cronies and whatnot so pretty pretty cool book um again is it really necessary towards the main story no, I just think it adds to the absolute carnage experience. It is a fun read. Uh, it, it's pretty cool to see, you know, what might happen to Misty Knight. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought this one was cool. I think it's fun, okay? So, good story. Not necessary, but if you have the extra money to read it, go ahead and read it. Because this one was worth it for me. Alright, so next, my number two on the list. And this is an absolute, no pun intended, that you must read this book. Uh, but it's Absolute Carnage issue two. This was uh, my number two on the list this week. This continues the main story um, when it comes to, this, to the Absolute Carnage books. And the artwork by Ryan Stegman is absolutely gorgeous. This is a book that you want to take your time in looking at and paying attention to. And in this story, we wind up getting to see really the scramble of... Um, Spider-Man and Venom in this issue. Okay, they're trying to escape. They can't get. They can't beat um, Carnage. They can't beat uh, you know Norman Osborn, who's keeping you know who Carnage is keeping him alive at the same time. And they're trying to gather you know their pieces together here, our two heroes, and trying to figure out what can they do to actually defeat um, Carnage. And that's basically their idea is trying to get all the codexes or trying to get the people together to take the codexes from them to bring to the maker's machine. Um, that's what they're trying to do here. So what happens in this issue, you get to see some cool dialogue between Carnage and Norman Osborn on why Carnage is, is keeping Norman Osborn alive. It has that very horrific tone to it. It's wonderfully drawn, like I said earlier in the book. Um, we get to see a couple panels in here where it ties into the Venom book that was released al already this week too. And now going back to that Miles Morales book, okay, you get to see this exact scene that happened in Miles Morales tie-in issue where Venom uh, comes across uh, Gargan. He throws him into the fight uh, to try to help Miles Morales. Carnage is there and we wind up seeing that Carnage tries to take the codex from, uh, from Gargan. Venom winds up saving him, but at the end of the day, you wind up seeing Miles Morales uh, sacrifice himself to help save Gargan as well, and he gets captured, and he winds up being possessed. But the consistency of the stories, again, that Miles Morales tie in in this one are completely different. It's just mind-blowing how editorial saw this and did not match this up, but the way this story was told in this book in absolute carnage the main story was much better makes much more sense it has sacrifice it has emotion it, it represents what miles morales is about uh you know it's it, it's just a very it's just much it's written much better okay and uh the way the artwork was told in this story with the story is really good so good stuff here Definitely worth reading this particular book, obviously, if you're following the main event. Uh, and it, it, it leaves you cliffhanged with, like, holy shit, Miles Morales is being possessed now. And it seems like that's Carnage's goal is to, you know, possess everybody to get him on his army to, to take over everything. So really cool stuff of what happened here. All right. So moving on to my number one Absolute Carnage book this week. And this one goes to Venom issue 17, and there's one reason why, okay? Um, the way this book 
opens up is that Venom is obviously all beat up. We wind up getting to see the situations that happen with him and Spider-Man in here. And now it focuses on Dylan, okay, and, uh, and the maker and Norman Osborn's kid. Okay, so the maker's just being a dick in this issue, and he sits there and he says, well, it's time to experiment on you. And uh, he's like, uh, we got to get that Kodaks out. And then little Dylan is sitting there going, no way, man, you can't do that. My dad and Spider-Man said no, and you can't, you can't put him in that machine. And he's like, what if your dad is dead? He's like, we got to figure out a way to stop this whole thing, you know? Next thing you wind up seeing is that from separation anxiety one shot you see the actual life foundation symbiotes come in and uh they start attacking uh the maker and they want brock's son dylan and you're like shit that is freaking awesome so right away that book ties into this to this venom book so i was like man that is really well done so it makes it even more of an importance to read separation anxiety now to know who these characters might be and how they were possessed so you get to see a really cool battle that happens there and we get to see the maker almost gets the upper hand on trying to disintegrate the uh, the symbiotes from Sadie and the family. Sadie was the young girl that was escaping from the family at the end of that separation anxiety issue. And um, you get to see this, this whole fight th that happens. And just as the symbiotes are about to attack the boys, uh, we wind up seeing a important symbiote that we have not seen in a very long time, okay? And this was from the host of Venom. If you remember that series that Bagley wrote, okay? You wind up getting to see the reappearance of Sleeper, that symbiote, the baby symbiote that Eddie Brock had. And I was like, holy shit! I'm like, Donny Cates remembered even the sleeper where he was just in a miniseries? That is freaking brilliant. Ah, uh, brilliant. So Donny Cates weaved the Absolute Carnage book and the Venom book perfectly together on how it cross-tied in to Separation Anxiety, Venom, and Absolute Carnage. That's the way you do a tie-in book right there. Beautifully written. Artwork was just as good in this book as it was in the Absolute Carnage book, even though it was done by a different artist, it looked phenomenal. And uh, my hat's off to Donny Cates with that Venom book. I mean, he wrote it brilliantly. So that's what happened in every single one of those books. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too much. It's just the best way for me this week to get all these books covered. So, so because all of them were um, actually, so many of them were released. So, um, there you got a gist of it. If you haven't gotten your books yet, don't worry about Miles Morales. If you're looking for a good experience, read definitely Venom and Absolute Carnage and Lethal Protectors. I'll leave that one up to you. So guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss any content from me. Hopefully you enjoyed my rankings for Absolute Carnage. And fans, I'll see you on the next comic book review. Take care. Bye.